Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. This one is all about how to make your own creative titles. So you can never go wrong with just a plain white title on a black screen. That's a classic way to do a title. It never really goes out of style. And as I'm sure you're aware of, there's so many ways to kind of animate text flying in and out of the screens that comes off as kind of cringy. But with that said, here are some ways to make original titles from scratch. First, we'll start with the basics and then we'll move into more complicated titles. Oh, and don't mind the pandemic hair. I'm going for the Marv from Home Alone look. All right, we're going to be moving at a very fast pace. So if you find it too quick, then pause and rewatch each section or watch at a slower speed. Basic custom title. We're animating it in and out. So we're going to get our custom title from our title screen, drag it up top of our clip, trim it down. Then we're going to select the font and the size that we like. Then we're going to hit the T. Well, let's use the Pro Mouse. This is better. Then we're going to hit the T. And all where you see in, that's the animation for the clip coming in. And the out is for the animation out. This custom title is designed to animate your own movements in and out. All right, we want it coming from this position. So we're going to set the position by putting 100 in the X, 100 into the Y. We'll take a look at that. So that's coming off the screen into position one letter at a time. Next, we want to change the Z axis. And the Z axis is actually from me to you. So the distance from the screen to our eyes. So it's getting bigger into smaller. So we can change the spread and that'll bring the lettering closer together. And the unit size we have selected is character. That means we have one letter at a time. Here we want word, because that's going to send the whole word out by itself. And then we're going to do the exact opposite of the position that we started with by putting negative 100, negative 100. And that will send it off the screen. We can blur, and this is what it looks like. Flies in character by character, then one word flies off and down. Reset the X and Y out positions to zero. And the Z axis from the screen to you. I'm going to raise that number up so it looks like it's flying right off the screen. So let's take a look at the final result and it should fly right out of the screen. That's great. Next up, we have the bad TV effect. And this is quite simple. We just have one title. I've animated it in and out of the screen using these numbers to animate in. And you'll see I've used the character, so one letter at a time. And then these are my out points and this automatically animates, but now I'm just gonna get the bad TV effect and drag it right on top of the clip, and that's it. Bad TV, easy. There's the parameters. Next, earthquake. So we have our single clip, chop it up into three pieces, and we just add the earthquake effect to the middle clip. And then we can adjust how intense we want that to look, but that's it, it's a very simple effect. Next up, the flickering neon light look. So I just have my title layer chopped up into a bunch of pieces. And then I'm going to go down and select glow, show it the options, change the color and the blur and the radius to whatever you like. So I'll toggle that effect on and off so you can see the difference before and after. So I just chopped up my title layer and put the effect on and off and timed it with the sound design to give the effect that a neon light is flickering on and off. Next up is Glitch. Very simple. The middle clip, I just put the glitch effect on. This is from Ryan Nangle. I'll put the link in the description to get the glitch effect. Next up is Underwater Effect. I'll show you here by muting the effect and we'll start from scratch. Get the custom title, drag it on top of the clip. Set your font and size according to what you like. And then here's the most important part. In the x-axis rotation, we want to rotate the clip so it's flush with the water. So it seems like it's flat on top of the water. I'm going to scale it up and also track it out to spread the letters apart a little bit. Now we're going to pull the opacity right down so it looks like it's kind of submerged into the water. Bring down the x-rotation a little more. And now I'm just going to add the underwater effect right on top of the clip. And then I'm going to correct the adjustments to make it seem more realistic, bring the speed down, the refraction down. And once we add a little bit of water sound design, that looks great. Next up, we have stenciled letters revealing the background. So I'm going to show you how to make this. We drop in the customs title again, fit it to the size, change the font and size like we always have done. 
So I'm going to scale it up a bit more there. And then we're going to go to the blend mode. And here we want to stencil, alpha or luma, either will work, and that will reveal what's in the background. Let's bring our canvas size right down to 25% so we can keyframe our title on and off the screen. So first let's make the size a lot larger. Then we'll drag it off to the left side of the screen. Then we'll go to the beginning of our title, click the keyframe, then go to the last frame of our title, drag it all the way across, hold shift to lock it into the horizontal axis. And then we have our effect. Let's animate this text one more way. So we'll click on the T tool and open up the position. Make sure that it's coming from that position, which it is. Then we'll look at the Z numbers. Minus 1000 will make it really small, really far away from us. Let's go even farther, minus 3000. That's super far away from us. And as it comes flying in, once that's good, let's make it fly out. So we look at the out position, make sure it is the whole word is flying out and we have it going to that position on the Z axis. Let's type in 250 that'll fly right up the screen. Let's see if that flies off the screen. It does fly off the screen. However, we want it to go through the open area of the letter so we can change the X axis, drag it over and let's see if that flies right through the lettering. Perfect. Now we don't want it to fly through the lettering and the screen to turn black. So the way we solve that issue is we go right to the spot where the screen turns black. We cut the clip there. We make a compound clip between the first clip and the title. Right click new compound clip. And then we cut the clip at that same spot again, right where the screen turns black. And then we bring in that existing clip and it should fly right through to the open ocean. Here we go. Cool effect. Next up is the fly over the title effect. So here's how we create that. We'll grab the flying text title. Bring it over top of our clip, cut it down to size, center it, select the font, whatever we want, size, etc. Now here is the z-axis again. We've seen that before. I just want to show you quickly in the custom title, there actually is no z-axis option. We don't have the ability to animate the z-axis throughout our entire clip. If you look there, we only have the x and y under transform and position. So since we can't keyframe the z-axis in Final Cut, I made one in motion called Flying Text Title. The link is in the description, completely free. Okay, we've selected the beginning of our title. We'll go to the Z position, keyframe our position, we go to the last clip or wherever we want to fly over the text. So it could be a bit back right there. I will go to our Z position and select 160. Yeah, let's go a little bit more than that, 180. And that's not quite gone, so we'll go 190, and that should fly right by the text. Good. Let's take a look and see what it looks like. You'll notice it kind of looks a little bit fake, like it's pushing forward. So the way we can solve that, we just drag the text a bit forward, and it looks like it's stuck on top of the trees. That looks much better. And finally, let's change our title into 3D text. And if I zoom in or go to the end, you can see it looks a little bit more 3D as we fly over top of it. All right, next up, we're going to fly through. Now, I've been finding the plugins that I've been using to motion track titles like this don't work as well. And while this isn't perfect, it is a pretty cool title animation for free. So we're going to do the usual, drag the flying text over top of the clip, change the font, center it, change the size, change the scale there. And again, here we want 3D text, have it selected. Now we'll go to the beginning of our clip, hit the keyframe on the Z axis, so or all the position, go to the place where we want to fly through the text, and change the number. So we'll try 200, that looks really good. 210, 215 will fly us right through the text. It looks like we're gonna hit the R. Yeah, so I want to move that over a little bit so we can change the X axis, and slide with the X over a little bit so it looks like we're flying through the H and the R. That looks a bit better. We're moving on. We have Italy flying over top of a girl walking on the mountain. And while that looks pretty good, I've noticed that the text gets too big too quickly. So I, I click an area in the middle of the title there and bring the Z value down and that will slow the growth of the title as it reaches its final keyframe. So I think this is going to look better as it grows slower and then speeds up. That looks like a perfectly motion track title. Amazing. Here's another way we can get a slower version of the flying through the text. And we also don't have to do 
any of that compound clip cutting of the last clip because it's dark it works perfectly well this way so under blend mode just change the stencil alpha so i already showed you how to make this effect with the custom title layer but to be honest the flying text layer works much better and it's less work okay next up we have a wipe mask or reveal mask or whatever you want to call it if you've watched my previous tutorials you will know how to do this already however we will go over it again we want to get the draw mask from our effects drag it on top of our title adjustment layer and then we are going to put it over top of our body because we don't want text to appear where our body is so we're going to invert the mask and zoom into 200 center that up make sure we hit our control points keyframe and then frame by frame by hitting the right arrow we're going to work through our mask so by selecting all four of the points you can adjust them all together or you can individually adjust them i'm going to speed that up nice and quickly as I adjust and mask out all the lettering. And that's what the final result looks, looks like. However, you notice it's shaky. If we go down to our stabilization and click the tripod mode, this will make it look like the letters have locked onto the fence and this is the effect you wanna go for. Here are some other examples of ways you can reveal place names. Get creative with it, throw a blur on it, do whatever you want. In our final example, we have motion track text stuck on the fence and when the camera is tracking along with the person. So we're going to be using our motion tracker drop zone title layer here. Drop it on top of the clip and trim it down to what you like. And then we're going to open up the track editor. Inside the editor, we're going to use this tracking box and put it on the beginning location of the fence. So we're going to hit play and let that track along. But as the tracker hits our body, you notice it clings onto the body and we lose it. So let's... Let's back it up to the last good frame that it's st stuck on the fence. Then we will zoom into our keyframes and see exactly the frame that we lose it. So let's zoom in here. Now we can clearly see our frames. Let's highlight them all by holding shift and drag, right click, remove keyframes. And now we're going to select offset position X and Y, and we're gonna manually keyframe it ourselves. So you'll see that's where we lose it. But if we just drag it over to the exact position where it was, that should smoothly carry it on. Let's have a look. It's like we were never there. Perfect, that's exactly it. So we'll go back to the last good frame. When it passes us, once we found that frame where it loses, good, it's that one, we'll click play and let it track out. All right, that tracking is all done. So we can export our data and we will drop in the text into our drop zone. So find that there's the text, drop it in, apply, and let's take a look now. So we're walking behind the text and we want to appear in front. So basically it's the exact same thing we just did in the last title with the mask. However, there is one difference. So I'm going to draw the mask over top of my body, but you'll notice it creates, once I invert it, it creates a black box. I don't know why it does this, but there is a workaround. So if I copy and paste the exact clip and then drag that clip underneath, we'll create a compound clip with the title layer and the clip, new compound clip, right by right clicking, and then we'll mask out that entire clip. So that'll show the clip underneath. So that's the way we can work around that problem. And then the rest is just the exact same thing we did before. We zoom in and we hit the control points and frame by frame, we just adjust our control points so that it looks like we're walking in front of the text. Here's another example of how you can use this effect. All right, so this video is not sponsored, so I'm going to insert a little self promo. If this video helped you at all, it'd be awesome if you could head over to my Instagram and follow me there. I post lots of travel related photo video and lots of day to day other fun things to consume. As for the next tutorial on this channel, comment which you'd like to see next. Transitions, 10 ways to use a mask, or the basics of color grading and color science. All right, that's it for this one. Catch me in the next video. Peace.